What's going on guys, it's Adonis and today is the review of the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Let's get into it. Now before we get started, full disclaimer, I actually purchased the base model of the Touch Bar MacBook Pro on purpose. So no, this isn't the maxed out 15 inch, this is the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, because I really wanted to see how powerful this computer actually is for video editors. Now because I edit in Final Cut Pro, this is actually gonna be a test on how it performs on this machine. Um, I do not use Premiere, I just think it's not as good as far as uh, editing workflows and dealing with 4K footage. Um, and there's been plenty of sites and videos and YouTubers that have done numerous tests on this to prove that theory. Um, I utilize Final Cut Pro, so if you're looking for somebody to do a review on this machine for Premiere, I will try to leave some links in the description for you guys. As well. So let's just talk about the overview, what I did on the computer. So I was using it as my main portable editing machine. Um, I actually edited my unboxings for the NES, the review for the NES, the unboxing for the uh, Powerbeats 3, the review for the Powerbeats 3. I did both of them on the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and it handled it very, very well. And if you guys wanna check out what those reviews look like and the things that I utilize in them, the link will be in the description for you guys as well. Now the plugins I ended up using for color grading was Color Finale. I did use the Core Melt Suite for Track X to actually add tracking motion for text inside of Final Cut Pro and it handled these things in background rendering extremely well, um, more than I thought it would. And that is kind of a testament to this machine. Yes, it is not a dedicated graphics card. It's integrated into the processor for the Intel series. So it's not extremely powerful for video editing, but it handled these things fairly well. Now I did do some comparisons with render times to my iMac uh, late 2015, it's kind of fully maxed out, i7 6700K processor, that's the Skylake variant, the R9 by AMD, the M95X with four gigabytes of graphics memory. I have 24 gigabytes of RAM in this machine as well. Uh, in short, it's a powerhouse for editing. Now there were some differences in render time. Obviously the iMac is superior in every aspect as far as render graphics and processor performance. Um, and it probably did around four times faster the majority of the time, sometimes three times faster as far as the project. Now, what does this mean? It just means that the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar is the entry level computer. It's actually handling it fairly well. Um, and if you're not on a time crunch, you just need to be able to edit um, you know, your projects on the go and you're not trying to deliver from that machine, it actually does a fairly, fairly good job. Now, I know for some, most people that are going into video editing, they're starting out, they're using iMovie. So I decided to do some comparisons with the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and the iPad Pro as well, the 12.9 inch variant. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for some time, you guys know that I love the iPad Pro. I actually did a review on it when it came out and I said for 90% of people, this could replace your laptop. And that statement still holds true. This is a powerhouse of an iPad. The processing performance, single core, it rivals almost every MacBook Pro that Apple sells, not to mention its graphic performance is very close to a base 15 inch as well. So it's got a ton of performance. It's more so of are there apps that will utilize that performance? And luckily iMovie does. So I did some comparisons. I took a 14 minute clip, just some random 4K clips from my GH4, brought them into iMovie, same exact project on both the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro with touch bar and the results were kind of shocking. So the iPad Pro rendered the 14 minute clip in half the time, around 17 minutes to render on the iPad Pro versus the 35 to 36 minutes on the MacBook Pro with touch bar. Now, that sounds crazy and it is, but I'm trying to tell you guys, the iPad Pro is a beast of a machine to edit on in iMovie. It just works really, really well. And like I said, that's for the entry level people, the people that are starting out, they wanna edit, they have footage from their iPhone or from their DSLRs, and they just wanna put a cool little clip together in iMovie. The iPad Pro would be perfect for that. The MacBook Pro can't handle it, it just, does a better job on the iPad Pro. Now where the MacBook Pro does excel obviously is in Final Cut where you have 
the ability to add plugins and different animations and text and 3D options and you know taking things into motion and doing graphics there. Like there's more flexibility obviously for a professional in that space and it can handle that as well. But let's actually move away from processing and graphics performance for video and actually go into kind of like some of the main things that a lot of people had questions about. Mainly being, Oh my God, USB-C, eh, oh my God, where's the USB for? Eh, all these dongles, man. Eh. And to be honest, I just think it's not that big of a deal. I think people are blowing it way out of proportion. Um, and I'll give you an example. So I have a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter that I had for my Thunderbolt drive that I have a lot of my videos and stuff on when I edit. So instead of just keeping this dongle, you know, in a bag somewhere, I just connected it to the end of the cable for the drive and just wrapped it up with the drive. Like there was no extra work needed to do to connect it to my computer once it's already connected to the drive. The second adapter I had was the media adapter with the VGA, USB type A and the USB C port on it. Um, and the only reason I had that to begin with was because when I went to the store to buy it, they were out of the USB-C to USB-A adapter. So I was just like, all right, well, this will work for me. And it did because the only time I used it was when I needed to connect a card reader to it. And that was kind of it. I just feel people are blowing out of proportion. Like this is an industry standard switch. Like things are gonna be adopting USB-C, get over it. Now I know it's frustrating. I do when you have older legacy ports, drives, things that you use that are USB type A, and you now at this point in time have to get an adapter. But keep in mind the things you'll be buying in the future will not need an adapter because it'll already be USB-C compatible. So I just feel like because we're in that weird transition period that people just wanna complain about it, it's just not that serious. It just, it, it, it isn't, I'm sorry. It isn't. Now the other big thing was the touch bar. The touch bar being this new revolutionary type of interface on the keyboard, was it revolutionary? And I'm gonna have to say yes and no. So let's start with the no first. Now because I was doing so much video editing on this machine, I do everything via keystrokes. And since I've been utilizing Final Cut Pro now for about two years, and I know the shortcuts and everything like that, that is actually faster than utilizing the touch bar. So for me in that respect, I didn't quite use it as much as I thought I would use it in video editing. Now there were some really cool features, especially when you go like full screen and you can still scrub through your timeline with it being full screen. That is extremely handy. I love that so much, but that wasn't even the most exciting part about the touch bar. Now, as far as why I really, really love the touch bar, it really comes down to why it's there in the first place. Nobody uses the function keys, nobody. The only time we ever use them is to do what? Volume up, mute the volume, maybe play stuff through iTunes, maybe sometimes turn up your brightness and turn it down. That's the only time we ever use it. So when we're not using those functions, they just sit there, not doing anything. Ever. And then now you have apps like Rocket where you can remove your dock from your display and just showcase it on your touch bar whenever you want to. That is epic. That is so good. Not to mention other apps being able to customize it for the app. So if I'm in Safari and I wanna change what that touch bar shows there, it's great. And the functionality in Safari is fantastic. I don't have to move my mouse. I can create a new tab there. I can, you know, have my favorites bar there. I could have a share button there directly from there. Like the functionality in each app is just huge. It's so good. And those are the things where I think people really have to start to utilize it to actually see the power behind the touch bar. Also on the touch bar, you have obviously options to customize it. One of my favorite being doing screenshots since I do a lot of reviews for, you know, shows and things like that, recap videos, I need to do screen capture. Like you can actually screenshot things directly from the touch bar without any effort. Like it's so good. Oh, so good. And then touch ID. Oh my God, I love this. Like being able to just Touch, log into your computer. Nobody likes passwords, nobody. I mean, that's just like one of the best features of the computer is the Touch ID. As simple as it is, as tiny of a feature that is, it is fantastic. It works so well. Now this is what I really want Apple to do. If Apple can make a magic keyboard standalone with a touch bar, your boy is in there because I would love to utilize that on my iMac, that'd be the business, especially just for those little day-to-day -day task things like Safari, taking notes, 
Man, it was just so good. I, 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 man, I need that on my iMac. Now the speakers on this computer are way better than the previous generation. Here's an audio sample, a song I produced, my cousin wrote and sang on this track. That way you guys can get an idea of what the audio actually sounds like. Oh, baby, take your clothes off and get new. I brought my camera out for you. Anything goes, there's no rules tonight. Now battery life on the machine worked really, really well. The charge is extremely fast. Um, the only time the battery drains really, really quick is when I'm in Final Cut. Um, I would usually get about nine to 10 hours on regular use, but as soon as Final Cut opens and I'm starting to work in there, that drops to like four hours and it's gone. Like really quick. Um, and like I said, it could be just on the workload that I'm doing with uh, some, of the, some of the things that I'm doing in my session, whether it be tracking text, the heavy color grading, if I'm adding like a lot of blurs and things like that, that could contribute to battery drain because I'm working the processor a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, it kind of cuts the battery life in half when I'm video editing. But the beauty about USB-C is if you have a portable charger on hand and you can just plug that into the portable charger while you're on the go, man, it's, it, I'm telling you, USB-C guys, it's, it's here, take advantage. Take advantage. So my final thoughts on the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar is I actually really, really like the machine, mainly because of its capability in its entry level state. Now I know they sell a MacBook Pro that's lower in cost without the Touch Bar, but we're talking about the Touch Bar MacBook Pro, obviously, so this is the entry level for that machine. You have good battery life when you're not doing video editing, and then when you are, you can either have a portable charger next to you, or if you're near an outlet, you're good to go. Um, standby time is great. The regular battery life is great. Um, and then, like I said, the capability with the touch bar, the functionality, how it just enhances your day-to-day -day stuff, makes things a little bit more simple. And you have a lot of custom functionality you can add in the future with third-party developers. I think it's a win, guys. I think it's a win. Well, that's gonna do it for my review of the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this machine. Do you have one? How is it working for you? And do you have any other questions for me about this computer? I would really like to know. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button, show your boys some love. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you're gonna wanna do that. Hit that APP logo in the corner to subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna check out my last video, link will be right here to the side. All right, guys, till next time. Later.